So today we're going to be talking about how do you get noticed in your feed. You're posting on LinkedIn, you're sharing content, and you could have the most amazing insights, but for some reason it's landing flat. So you're putting all this effort in and it feels like, who the hell is seeing this? Who? What's the point in doing it? And I want to just talk through that challenge today, really, of like, you're posting, you're not getting the engagement that you think you should have, and is it still worth it? And then give you some kind of practical things that you can do to make a difference, to move the needle. So let's just let's just start from from kind of the fundamentals. So when you look at your social posts and what you're putting out, it's really easy to to beat yourself up when a post doesn't perform. And one of the things that I talk a lot to, to people about is separating their personal emotions from their social media content. And the reason why that's important is because Look, if you if you have a post that really performs, you're going to get a massive uh, buzz from that. You're going to get a dopamine rush. Your brain chemistry is going to go berserk. And so we can easily get addicted to that kind of mechanism. In other words, approval. And that's really what it is. And why you need to separate your emotions, because actually what happens is you can ad get addicted to the approval from your content. And then your your kind of self-esteem, your confidence, everything is wrapped up in your content. Now, it's true to say that, you you know, it's reasonable to say you want more and more engagement. You want more followers. It's a perfectly legitimate goal to have. However, not every follower and not all engagement is good for you. And this is where it comes down to separating your emotions from your content. What do you really want from your content? If you're committing to post five times a week or whatever you're doing, you need to have the goals in mind of, of what the hell am I doing this for? How do I measure if this is successful? And there's a joke in the kind of marketing world where you do a campaign and the aim of the campaign is to win clients and get leads. And the campaign doesn't perform and the marketer gets summoned to their boss's office. And the boss says, so where's the leads? Where's the sales? And the marketing person says, uh, well, it takes time to build a brand and establish our reputation. But look at the brand awareness we got from the campaign. In other words... Sometimes what happens is we set out with one goal and can quickly shift to another goal because it's more convenient for us, it's easier for us, or because we've inadvertently got hooked into doing something that doesn't actually achieve the goal. In other words, we change the goal. So what do you want from your content? What's the point of it? Because if you don't know that, you can't measure what's working and what's not. I'll give you an example. The content that brings me the most leads, the content that gets me the most, most traction, the content that makes me the most money is often the least uh, popular of my content. So if I put out a post talking specifically to my ideal client and I put out and say, this is the problem you're facing, here's how you overcome it, here's the challenges and this is how I can help, that post will do poorly poorly compared to me sharing a motivational quote and the motivational quote will go around the world I'll have a massive buzz from it I'll feel extra special but has it helped me win any business and this is the point that I was making with the story earlier about the marketing person can find a reason to justify that we look for success and we just flow into the success but sometimes that success is in different places. And so what we end up doing is pursuing the wrong goals. We have a written down plan. And on that written down plan, it says our goal is leads and clients. But then when we get into implementation, the day to day creating posts, we actually just do what gets us the likes, the comments and the impressions. So there is an inherent 
uh, vulnerability that we have as human beings to social media content in that we will share content and get this dopamine and brain chemistry berserkness and just follow it. But if you want to really build your business, you've got to get noticed in, in the feed by the people who matter. You've got to get the attention of the people who will pay you. And that does not need thousands and thousands of likes and comments and impressions or hundreds of likes and comments impressions. And this is where we kind of screw ourselves up because we think, and even I do this, um, we think numbers equals success when actually it's the right numbers equal success. So if I get 25 CEOs on my content and they think this is really on point for, for, for where we are, Dean, it's like you read our minds, that's more valuable to me than a thousand people thinking I'm a nice person. Now, some of you go, hmm, Dean, I don't agree with you there. Well, it's true. You're not, if you're not, if you want to get famous, you, you can do that on social media very, very easily. But if you want to make a fortune, that requires focus. Fame is all about b appealing to a broad, big audience. And there are battle-tested formulas to do that. Fortune is all about appealing to people who will pay you. And the way I would compare this is Coca-Cola, big brand, they want everybody to know their name. Why? Because they'll sell millions to the masses. They'll sell millions of drinks to the masses. Rolls-Royce, don't advertise. Because they're not interested in the masses. Because they know in a year there might be a thousand customers. Uh, they make a lot of money from those thousand customers, but it's a fundamentally different business model. And if you're a solopreneur listening to me, if you're a small business listening to me, you want to be following a Rolls Royce strategy, not a Coca Cola strategy. And it's really funny because what we do is we look at those brands and think that's what we should be doing. They're successful, so should we copy them? Likewise, with influencers. Influencers are pursuing a mass market model, appealing to large volumes of people uh, to basically further their business goal. Is that the, op uh, the, the way to do it for you? Probably not. In nine times out of 10, actually more like 99 times out of 100, the influencer business model appealing to a mass market is not for you. You want to have the Rolls-Royce model where there's a handful of customers that you need to secure. And so you want to be highly influential with those customers, highly influential with your ideal clients. Now, why does all this play into how do you get more attention and noticed in the feed? How do you do that? Well, it's really straightforward. You see, if you detach yourself from your success metrics being likes, comments, and impressions, you can actually create very targeted content, hyper-relevant content, just for the people who matter to you, the people who pay you. And I've, I've talked to hundreds of people, thousands of people, and when they come onto my programs, I talk to them about their personal clarity. Who are they going after? Who matters in their world? And, you know, what is their primary goal? How, what's they, what are they selling? What's the problem it solves? Why does that matter? What's the reality in the world of your ideal client? What's going on? What they're thinking? How do they feel about it? What, might be, uh, what they might be doing as a result of the problem that they're uh, living with? And I force my clients to get that clarity because... How can you communicate with your ideal client if you are not clear in your own head? How can you show them value 
if you aren't clear who the value is for? How can you give them helpful information if you don't know what keeps them up at night? And you'd be surprised how many people have never done that work to actually take themselves out of their world and put themselves in the customer's world. Because when you do that, you see the world from a very different perspective. You see it from the perspective of being in the problem. You know, it's really easy for me to sit here and, and say, you know, all sorts of stuff to you and give lots of advice to you. But I'm not in the problem. And so for me to serve my audience well, for me to attract and add value to the people who matter, the people who will pay me for my services, I have to leave my world and get into their world where they are, what they're facing, the way they think about it, the way they talk about it. Because when I do that, I become so relevant to them that they want to hang around me. They want to hang around my content. They want to hear more from me. But the reality is we never do that work. So if we think about the simple things like what content should we be creating, well, what, do they, what are they interested in? What's the problems they're facing? What are the quick tips and hints and, and tactics we can share? But let me give you the biggest tip I think most people, light bulbs go on. Every social post, every social post we do, we have some form of media asset or we have some form of feed preview. So on LinkedIn, that might be a first few lines of text if you're doing a text only. It's an image, it's a video, it's a carousel front cover. There's something that hits people in the eyes in the feed. Make sure that that is hyper, hyper relevant. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna clarify this because um, I did an article a couple of weeks ago uh, and put it up on my website because um, I find a lot of people still talk in very generic terms. So what they do is go, how to be more efficient? And it's like, that's nice. Nice broad appeal there. Let's see what you did there. Try and appeal to everybody. But first of all, how to be more efficient doesn't have any emotion in it whatsoever. Um, so how can we add more emotion into that how to be more efficient? How can we make it feel more dramatic? So we're thinking about how to get more done when you're overworked or how to get more done when you're drowning in tasks, right? How to get more done when you're back to back on Zoom calls, yeah? So how do we make it more relevant, right? More emotive, more down to earth. In other words, this ethereal how to be more efficient, how do we make it more real for people? Well, I, actually, I've got a million emails to reply to and I've got back-to-back -back calls all day. What the hell am I going to do? That's where we should be focusing our content. Now, so that's the first thing. Make it hyper-relevant to your target audience situation. So not how to be more efficient, which is generic, how to get more done when you're on back-to-back -back calls. Then how do we make it more relevant to our audience. So if I was targeting salespeople, how to get your proposals done when you're back to back on sales calls? How to, how to diarize your follow up so you can get more done between your sales calls? Contextualize the efficiency. So yes, I can help everybody be a bit more efficient, but how do I give value in that post for somebody I can only give value by being specific. And so the asset that I put out on my social media should not say how to be more efficient. It should be hyper relevant. So sometimes you'll see that I put big, bold text saying exactly what you're going to get from my content. I literally put, you know, a big sink. Usually it's like a pale blue and then a dark navy blue text. And I tell people if basically if you read this, this is what you're going to gain. And it's contextualized to my ideal client. And when you do that, when you do that, 
you suddenly start to get relevance. You get the attention of the people who matter. So if I'm scrolling and I'm a salesperson and I'm struggling with my time and I'm struggling to get things done I, and, and I'm scrolling and I see your image where you tell me how you're going to help me get more proposals out, even though I'm on back-to-back -back calls, guess what? I'm going to give you my attention. You'll get my attention. And, and we miss this. We miss this. We think, <laughs> we think, I'm getting passionate now, right? We think that the value should make it work. It's like the product sells itself. It's a total nonsense statement. The product will sell itself if people see it, if people hear about it. And when you think about the feed, what people scroll through, your primary job with that media asset that you see, what they see in the first two seconds as they scroll through their phone, that job is to make people stop. And I could probably talk, I could probably do a whole workshop on how to get people to stop because there's so many tactics. But the simple way to do this is big, bold text. Make sure your ideal client sees what they will personally gain from reading this post and that it is relevant for them, not efficiency or more productive Actually, how will it make me more productive? What's it going to change? Make it specific. And you'll notice your impression count goes up. But more than that, right, it's not going to go up like a motivational quote where everybody and anybody can go, that made me warm and cuddly inside and, and make me feel special and make me feel motivated. It's not going to do that. The impressions will come from people who actually want that. In other words, if I put out how... To, to get more proposals out and do more follow-up, even when you're on back-to-back -back Zoom calls, back-to-back uh, -back sales calls. If I put that out and people pay attention to that, if I've got a sales productivity coaching program, guess what? Everybody who's giving me their attention is saying, I want that. I want that outcome of that, of that post. I want that outcome. Now, it doesn't mean I will convert them all. It doesn't mean every one of them will be a lead, but I'm now attracting people who want what I've got to offer, right? They want the outcome that I can help them achieve. They don't know that they want me yet. They don't know they want to buy from me yet, but they want what I can offer. That means you're building a hyper relevant audience who want what you sell. They want the outcomes that you can deliver. And so, you're getting noticed in the feed, but more than that, you're actually getting noticed by people who will pay you. Not all of them straight away. And this is the other thing that many people don't get about content. Content is a long game, right? Yes, if I post motivational quotes every freaking day for the next three months, I'll triple my followers, triple my engagement, and you will think I'm a world star, famous I'm successful, everything, you'll want my life. But I won't make any more money. I won't make any more money. And this is what people forget is the hyper relevance, whatever you do it, it, with content, it's a long game. At any given time, there are people watching you right now that if you're consistent, in six months time, three months time, a week's time, we'll be ready to buy. At any given time, there is only a tiny fraction of the market who are ready to buy right now. In other words, they're already thinking, I've got to solve this. I need to invest in this. Like they're, they're, they're ready to be, for their orders to be taken. There's only a tiny percentage of people in that place. And so your job with your content is to appeal to the people who resonate with the outcomes, but maybe in a different place in terms of their buying journey. So I could be drowning in Zoom calls, drowning in sales calls and not getting proposals out, but it's not hurting me enough yet to do anything about it. It's not, it's not painful enough. I'm not losing out. I'm not mess, messing up enough. I'm not seeing the consequence. So I don't feel I need to do anything about it right now. 
And there's people at various different stages of their buying journey. And only a tiny fraction of those people are actually in the place where it's like, come on, I just got to do this. We just got to get this done now. It's gone on too long. I'm going to get a coach. They're going to help me with my productivity as a salesperson. There's a fraction of those people in the market at any given time. So it's important that you have hyper relevant content because if they stumble across you, if they find that post where you're relevant, they are more likely to be an inbound lead to you. They're more likely to ask for a conversation. They're more likely to book a call with you. But the long game of content is that for every one of those people who are ready to buy, there's probably 97 other people at different stages of the journey. And some of them not even realizing that this is a problem for them yet. You know, they're sending proposals three, four, five days after their calls, and they're not feeling the pain. They're not seeing that actually because of their productivity issues, they're costing them sales and deals are going to other people who can get their proposals in faster. So everybody is on a journey. And so what we forget is uh, with content is it's not about one post. It's about consistently posting for your ideal client because they are all different places. They're in different head spaces. And so that clarity piece becomes important. Uh, because you can't talk to them if you don't have that clarity. If you've not done the work, if you've not invested the time and sat down and really understood who they are. Because then you can't get the attention in the feed because you're talking in very broad, generic terms or you're saying things that are completely not important to them. They're not even a priority. You know, you're talking to somebody else. Um, so you have to have that clarity to get the no get noticed. And then you've got to be really clear on the promise of every post. What is the gain from this post? What? Are, why would they give me 30, 60, 90 seconds of their time to read my post? Well, human beings, were selfish. We only read posts when we think there's something in it for us. We are generally selfish. So if you're not giving them something that they can consume and find either entertaining, engaging, insightful, educational, they are not going to hang around to you. So how do you get noticed in the feed? Talk to exactly the people and talk about what matters to them. And to do that, you really have to invest the time and do the work. So I've got some frameworks that will actually help you do this, help you get that clarity. So DM me if you want one, and I will send you my clarity framework, which will help you understand and get in the heads of your ideal clients so you can get noticed in the feed by talking directly at them like your psychic.